Now, last month's data shows that demand for automobiles could be stalling out. Sales for May were the slowest in eight months. Now, that could spell trouble for the steel industry. Nevertheless, my next guest sees some market hotspots in the sector. I want to welcome Mark Parr, an analyst at KeyBank Capital Markets. Mark has been recognized as the number one stock picker in metals and mining by the Financial Times. We just call him our man of steel. Mark, good to have you with us. Thanks, yeah, thanks so much for coming. What, what are you in New back. York for, by the way? What's, New York is not a steel-making Well, yeah, this, this, is, this is the big week for steel in New York. So there's a big steel convention that goes on the same week every year. And we're here to, uh, to have some of the CEOs of the companies that are attending the conference meet with investors. Are they going to explain what's going on with the stock performance? Well, I mean, we're, we're always interested in what's going on with the industry, you know, and sometimes the markets have to take care of themselves. There's a lot of macro issues as well as industry issues. All right, so tell us what's going on with the industry, and then I want to find out why the stocks haven't really been performing. Well, you know, the, to, to your point on automotive sales in May, I mean, clearly there was a shortage of Japanese vehicles. And I think that perhaps the, uh, the domestics took advantage of that by cutting back on promotional activity. But if you look at underlying automotive production and the order rates, you know, most recent data out of the steel sector showed reasonably solid shipments in May. Actually, they were up relative to April. And you look at steel consumption year to date is up 20 percent compared to last year. So if consumption is up 20 percent compared to last year, why have the stocks, in your opinion, why have they lagged? Well, I, I think the, uh, that there's a, there, there continues to be a tremendous macro overhang on, on the overall sector. And you know, the, uh, the steel industry is increasingly global in nature. And you know, just, just general concern about the ability of the economy to maintain momentum in general over the second half of this year and into early next year is probably the major factor. Secondarily, though, this, the earnings recovery for carbon steel, for the basic steel stocks, is still in a very early stage. And so I think investors are still a little bit skittish, waiting for the earnings to arrive before they really want to move into the names. All right. So what names should we be paying attention to if you want to anticipate an increase? Well, again, to your point, talking about the automotive and just general carbon steel, you know, mm -hmm. the two names that we really would focus on would be AK Steel, which I talked about the last time we were together, and also Worthington, which is a distributor, a processor of steel. They don't make steel, but they deliver it to factories that stamp it into body parts for cars. And both of these companies are, have great balance sheets, uh, great momentum, good dividend yields. Uh, Worthington actually has an investment-grade balance sheet. And again, to your point, these stocks have not participated in the overall market move year to date. And I think given what's going on in the industry, that makes some exceptional values. All right. So Worthington and AK Steel. Yes. Tell me about the recent acquisition. We were talking about it earlier in the booth well, having to do with uh, Carpenter yeah, with Technology and yes. Latrobe, about $560 million. Well, now, this is, this is a, a little different side to the industry. These are the specialty producers. And, you know, Carpenter, for example, along with ATI, which is our top pick for 2011, I mean, Carpenter and ATI both make steel that goes into rotating parts on jet engines. And this market is, is really kind of the early arriver of upside for the aerospace cycle. There's a five-year aerospace cycle that was going to unfold in the 07 to 12 time frame, got waylaid in the downturn in 09, but all that backlog is still in the supply chain. And these stocks' earnings recovery and their volume and backlog momentum is exceptional. The stocks have pulled back quite a bit recently because of the pullback in nickel. And historically, there's been a good relation between the stocks and nickel prices. But I think that creates a tremendous value given the demand recovery unfolding and the earnings recovery that's following on behind it. All right. So ATI and Carpenter Technology, yes. indeed, we saw some orders coming out of the Paris Air Show yeah. uh, for Boeing jets, uh, 777s uh, coming out of Qatar. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Carpenter's had some good news along those lines with a new alloy that they've recently introduced along with uh, ATI with a, with a big long-term contract with a new 718 alloy for jet engines. So, yeah, there we'll see. We should see a lot of good uh, potential catalysts and data points for the sector this week. All right. And keep us informed as to that steel conference. Anything good come of it. Thank you All very right. much. We'll Mark Parr coming to us from KeyBank Capital Markets.